I went to the market and I bought an egg, a bag of sugar, an orange, a few satsumas and some apples. Welcome to day 22 of Vlogmas and my project today is to make sugared fruit. I bought this dough bowl, fruit bowl, from Rochester Market. You might remember I took you on a tour of the market and showed you some of my thrifted finds in an earlier episode of Vlogmas. And I was going to tumble loads of Christmas baubles into it. And then I was thinking about those plastic pears. Do you remember when I did my workshop declutter and I decided to put the pears up in the loft? And I thought, why don't I keep things natural? And instead of going for all the plasticky decorations for Christmas, why don't I use real fruits and enjoy some of that festive aroma? So what I'm going to do is to separate my egg, to use the egg white as a glue and dust my fruit with sugar. I've got granulated sugar here, so I'm going to whiz it up in my food processor to make caster sugar. Let's make it a little bit finer. So come with me and see how it turns out. This is a trick my mum used to use. She used to blend down her regular granulated sugar to make caster sugar. Rather than getting out my food blender, I'm hoping this smoothie maker is going to do the trick. So here goes. certainly does look slightly finer. Give it a shake and one more blast. Well, thanks mum. I think that was a great old hack. Lovely, finely powdered sugar. Next thing I need to do is separate my eggs. So here goes. Nice firm crack. Catch the egg whites in there. And I'll put the egg yolk in the other bowl, ready for making cakes or biscuits, or perhaps we'll have scrambled eggs for lunch. Next, I take a fork and whisk the egg whites. I guess the idea is to break the egg white up so it's not quite so gloopy. I wonder whether I'm there yet. I've prepared myself a little bit of a sugaring station. I've got a baking tray lined with greaseproof paper and then a cooling rack on the top. The idea being that I will paint the fruit with the egg white and then douse them in sugar. Any excess sugar will land up in the bottom of the pan and then I can recycle it. Oops, as you can see, I got in a muddle with my filming here, but the first two apples, I painted them with the egg yolk and then sprinkled the, the sugar on from the top so it fell through to the bottom of the pan and then I decided the coverage wasn't very effective because they couldn't get through to all sides so I switched my technique up a little bit. So I've pierced my satsuma with a kebab stick so hopefully that'll get me something to grab onto while I douse it in sugar. Missed a bit there. I think I prefer the apples. Oh, 
So they're looking pretty good. I will say I think the coverage was better on the apples. I don't know whether the waxy skins of the satsumas is repelling the egg white and sugar mix a little bit. So I'm going to leave those to air dry, probably overnight, and then I can use them decoratively in my fruit bowl. Not bad for a first attempt. Oh, that apple looks beautiful. And while my fruit dries, I thought you might like to see my narcissi, which I planted out on day two of Vlogmas. So here we are at day 22, and they've come out into flower. It's 24 hours later, and just look at my beautiful apples. I'm holding it gently, but actually I can apply quite a lot of pressure and it's not falling apart. So I think that is a 100% success. And to mark the occasion, I've made sure it's frosty outside. The question now is, what am I going to do with these? So I'm going to tumble them into my wooden fruit bowl, but with a few added extras. I've decided to mix some of my sugared fruit with the natural fruit. And the only thing I need to bear in mind is that where I sugared the fruit using um, the kebab stick as the stalk so I could get all the way around the fruit, that when I take that out, it's going to leave a small hole and quite likely the fruit is going to rot off reasonably quickly, or certainly far quicker than the ones which had a natural stem. Because I've created that wound, um, they're not going to last so well. So you just need to keep an eye on that. So fruit at the ready fruit bowl at the ready and I've also got some packaging materials and the reason for that is actually when I was setting up the video I thought that looked quite nice as a sort of table runner but the reason I dug it out was because I felt I needed a little bit of height in the bowl I didn't want all the fruit and the greenery lost down at the bottom so my idea was I would pack out the bowl a little bit like that so that everything could rest on top and then I thought, well, why don't I add a few candles? But I wanted to make sure they were really secure and weren't going to wobble around. So I'm wondering about putting some blocks of wood underneath. So these are the pieces of wood that I use and I spray paint. So that was spray painting the uh, reindeer. Do you remember on Vlogmas a few episodes ago? I sp spray painted the glittery gold reindeer and that's his four hoof prints and um, obviously I was spraying something white another day. So let's have a look and see whether I can put a firm base down for the candles and then build the little arrangement around it. So I'm thinking oh, something like that. Actually the candles are different heights to begin with so perhaps it just needs that solid base around the bottom and then to weave some of the paper. I think I'm going to rip off the excess and just bed that down. So this means that I won't have to totally fill the bowl with greenery because I know I haven't got a lot to use. So here goes. I've got, I think this is called Ruscus. It grows wild. So I picked some up on my dog walk yesterday. It's really, really prickly. So using my secateurs, I'm going to cut it down into three different pieces. And then all I'm doing is line the ends in. But because this is paper with tiny holes in, I can probably wedge the stems in a little bit so they, they are more, so that they're held rather than just lying there. So you can see what I mean about not needing to fill up because even with those little bits of green on their own, because you've got the brown paper there, it's looking finished. One of those arrangements that you could add to over time without you know, having it looking finished to every, to every level. You don't always have to have everything. Florist perfect. So buried ivy here, same thing. I'm gonna slide it through the holes in the packaging just to lock it into position. Another buried with the stem with the berries at the end. Just take off that little dead bit. And put that down there, I think. 
And then I was trying to look for some Christmas pine yesterday and all I could find on the floor of the woods were these branches from a sequoia tree. All the tantalising branches were way up high. I would have needed a ladder about 10 metres tall to reach anything. So these are the bits that have been knocked off in the wind. And just making sure if you're using candles in the arrangement and you're planning to light them to keep all the greenery low because as your candles burn down, the lit flame will get closer and closer to all your flammable materials. I, think I just need one more piece over here. And then I can start placing my sugared fruit. And because the apples are heavy, they're just weighting down that brown packing paper so it's not quite so voluminous. Satsumas, so have that tucking in underneath that greenery there. I did say I was going to add in some of the unsugared fruit for contrast, so let's not forget that. These oranges are quite big. I don't think they're going to fit in. So let's light the candle. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, don't forget to give it a like and hit that share button and let your friends know how they can sugar fruit and make a really simple table arrangement for the festive period. That's all for me for now and I'll see you again tomorrow.